Good morning, everyone. It is Wednesday, July 10th, 2024. My name is Matt, and this is your Daily Crypto News. Don't forget to send me an email, matt at dailycryptonews.net, if you want to talk. Also, check us out on Twitter, at DCN Daily Crypto, and check us out on our Substack. Both are very enjoyable places. You will enjoy yourself there. So, welcome. Come. Come to those places. Hang out with us. Oh, by the way, if you haven't, Please click those five stars on Spotify or on Apple Podcasts and leave us a nice comment. Let's get into the news. The German government crypto wallets have moved around $344 million worth of Bitcoin to exchanges and OTC desks this morning. Already this week, the German BKA wallets have moved around $900 million worth of Bitcoin. And that was just on Monday. And $362 million on Tuesday. And then today... Another $344 million worth of Bitcoin. So it looks like they have just north of about a billion dollars left in their wallets. These Wednesday morning transfers include $73 million to centralized exchanges, $44 million to Kraken, $29 million to Coinbase. Around $98 million has been sent to trading firms. $66 million has gone to Amsterdam's Flow Transfers. Another $40.5 million has gone to unidentified addresses. In two different transactions, by the way. One was a test for $675,000. And I recommend that to everybody before you send a big sum of Bitcoin. Make sure you test out that wallet address. Make sure your Bitcoin shows up. Copy, paste, send it over. And who cares about the Satoshis are going to pay for the fee? It's better than losing your Bitcoin. Well, they think the same way I do. They sent a $675,000 test, which I would have sent a lot less than that, and then sent the remainder of the $40.5 million. And now you're wondering, where did they get all this Bitcoin? Well, apparently... They seized around $2.1 billion in a sweep of privacy websites. That was about 50,000 Bitcoin. And the United States FBI, or the Federal Bureau of Investigations, helped the German authorities with that one. Okay, so this next story is absolutely insane. Absolutely insane. And I'm going to mispronounce this this platform. It's called Huiwan Guarantee. Huiwan Guarantee. And it's an online platform linked to Cambodia's ruling family, and it offers services enabling crypto scams, including deep fake tools, victim data, and human trafficking tools. And they're also an escrow service and a money laundering service. So the crypto tracing firm, Elliptic, their report highlights why one guarantees role in facilitating scams with $11 billion in transactions since 2021 and about $3.4 billion this year alone. There are about 10 other platforms like Huai1 Guarantee that are used by crypto scammers, but Huai1 Guarantee is the biggest by far. The platform provides tools for scam operations, including shock-enabled GPS shackles for the workers, electronic batons to tase their workers to, to do the job of scamming people, fake investment websites, and money laundering services. Basically, it's a turnkey scamming crime operation. <laughs> That's literally what it is. It's a turnkey scam operation. Okay, so on one end, there's the Huai1 guarantee, the people who made the website and have all these tools for scamming. And on the other end, there's the people who do the scamming. And the people who do the scamming are often victims of elaborate forced labor schemes. There are compounds where people are forced to live and work, generating content to target scam victims. And they've been reported in Myanmar, the Philippines, Cambodia, and other countries in Southeast Asia. And they've basically operated out of hotels and resorts that were repurposed during COVID-19. And you can see the second and third and fourth order is consequences of policies during COVID-19. The researchers found that shock-enabled GPS trackers, shackles, and electronic batons for sale on the website. And they were used in the human trafficking operations that forced enslaved victims to work on the scam operations day in and day out in the compounds across Southeast Asia. Other listings offered data on potential scam targets basically if you are an older person and they have data on you they could sell that so you can go scam them and basically pig butcher talk them up get to know them blah 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 find out that they have x amount of dollars and then scam them and rip them off fake investment websites to persuade targets to transfer funds is a part of the pig butchering and deep fake face altering services for tricking scam victims Now, obviously, they offer the money laundering services after you scam the victims and you have the USDT coming in. They offer the money laundering services. They offer to obfuscate the source of the stolen tether. And USDT is the majority of the platform's money flows. This is actually quite shocking. Short sellers are shorting MicroStrategy, Coinbase, and NVIDIA. 
and they have invested around $7.4 billion against Coinbase in MicroStrategy alone. MicroStrategy was the most profitable short in Q2. Short sellers made around $1.6 billion or a 23% gain from a $5 billion short interest. Short sellers also earned around $500 million by shorting Coinbase, about 20% profit from a $2.4 billion position. Now, where the short sellers failed was putting $30 billion into NVIDIA it didn't pan out that well. The NVIDIA stock went up around 48% in Q2. Now, being the most valuable company in the world, there's only one place to really go. I mean, you can continue to go up. The odds are against you that you're going to keep continuing to go up. So, ensuring NVIDIA could be a big play in the future if they don't get liquidated first. Do you guys remember the staff accounting bill 121 that Joe Biden vetoed? It passed the House, it passed the Senate, went to Joe Biden's desk. He said, nah, we're not having that. Well, it's back on the floor this week. The United States House of Representatives need two-thirds of a majority to override President Biden's veto. Crypto lobbyists aren't assured that this week's vote will surpass that high bar. However, there's a lot of pressure on Democrats to vote for the bill and overrun Biden's veto. And with President Trump embracing crypto and saying that he's going to be the champion of crypto, a lot of Democrats are looking at this going like, hey, how do I play this in my district? Either I'm going to be for this and kind of side with Trump, or I'm going to be against this and stand with the president, which President Biden's campaign is a little rocky right now for obvious reasons. Which will the Democrats do? Time will tell. I know what I would vote for. I would vote for the staff accounting bill number 121. A former compliance officer at Crypto.com, whose name is Jose Luis Alonso Mejor. He faces multiple charges, including extortion, money laundering, unauthorized use of computer equipment, and unauthorized disclosures of sensitive data. By using said data, he threatened to explore sensitive information unless he received 44,000 euro or $47,666. Basically, he wanted this in compensation following his termination from Crypto.com. Long story short is he got none of that, and he's being held with a bail of $2 million. And finally, are you into gaming? Do you like Solana? Well, I have a new crypto gaming startup called Jungle, and they announced yesterday that it's developing a new mobile first-person shooter game called For the Win FTW on the Solana blockchain. For the Win is a speedy, team-based hero shooter that is currently an early alpha stage testing in South America. It has attracted 100,000 downloads in only its first month of availability. Solana Blockchain is there to implement features that reward players based on their in-game performance, aiming to incentivize users' acquisition and benefit power users. So that is FTW For the Win, Solana-based, team-based hero first-person shooter in alpha testing. Now, let's take a look at those crypto prices. Here comes the money. Here we go. Money talks. And the time is 1028 a.m. Eastern Daylight Savings Time. We have fear, greed at 40. We are fearful. And Bitcoin sitting at $57,805, up 0.6% in 24, down 4.3 in 7. Ethereum's up 1.5% at $3,116. Teller's number three, Binance is at 525, up 1.8%, and Solana is at 141, up 0.6%. Rounding off the top 10, we have USDC, XRP at 43.6 cents, up 0.8%, Tuncoin at $7.29, up 0.5%, Dogecoin at 10.9 cents, up 1.3%, and Cardano at 38.3 cents, up 2.7%. The total market cap is down almost 0.4%. At 2.13 trillion, we have a Bitcoin dominance of 53.4 and an ETH dominance of 17.5. That was our show today. My name is Matt. That was your daily crypto news. Please follow us on Twitter. Please follow us on Substack. And until tomorrow, happy hodling, everyone.